Hey, what's up guys? This is Nurse Howie and I'm just about ready to go to bed. We are going to get ready to go to our next assignment. And that means that we have to leave and me, we, me, me and Remy here. Remsters, Remy, come here. Come here, buddy. Oh, there you go. Get out of the camera. There you go. Anyway, um, I was gonna make a video, but I was really tired, but I didn't really pack. And this is, I'm a light traveler. All I really need is my camera and my laptop. Uh, obviously my blue Navy, uh, blue Navy scrubs uh, for the first day of orientation at the hospital. And um, air, uh, workout clothes, sleeping clothes, going out clothes. Just one of each since I'm only going to be there for a couple of weeks. Uh, definitely needed to make sure, that's what I should do tonight, to see if there's any board boarding for Remy because I'll be working 60 hours this week, 60 hours per week during this contract. Um, and then I'll also, I also have all my hygiene stuff and I've boiled that down to a T, but really I think I need to go also find like a rolling uh, suitcase that not only just rolls on the ground too, but also unfolds with multiple plastic pockets where I can see where everything is packed. And I need to go find that. Um, what else? Uh, people want to hang out because they know that I'm leaving, so now they want to hang out, of course. Um, so I need to put that into my day. Uh, I'll probably get new shoes because if you're a nurse, you if if you're not looking hard, you if you just look have to look a little bit and put a little bit of effort into it, you can find places that'll give discounts on shoes, so I didn't get that. Um, got a jacket, got a couple of masks. That's basically it. You know, I'll do a video of exactly what to pack as a traveler, and I'll put that up. Um, also wanted to talk about my CRNA shadowing uh, for my day three and day two. Oh, it's gonna be a good one, because on the second day, somebody got Kick that a OR. Well, I'll talk about that later. Okay, all right, but for now, sleep. All right, y'all, so I am getting ready to pack up. Well, actually, I, I kind of packed up, but this is the best I'm gonna do because I'm gonna keep putting it off. But I've got Remy stuff. There's Remy right there. I've got jackets, I've got technological stuff and camera equipment, laptop. Um, I've got Remy's food. Remy's clothes, Remy's toys. I've got the Roomba going on in my room. I've got my um, personal hygiene stuff. Um, cleaned up my other room. I gotta clean up my master bedroom, but then I've got my clothes, definitely my scrubs. Always have navy blue scrubs. What are you doing, Remy? I need to clean that bed. I always have navy blue scrubs and black uh, scrubs. Uh, is my personal favorite, but definitely have navy blue scrubs. Always have as much underwear as you can pack in there. Workout, just a couple of workout clothes. Um, you're just gonna keep reusing them anyway, and you can use them for sleep, and then just maybe one, one jeans, um, a blazer, and a couple of like going out clothes, but that's it. Um, that's all I need from my clothing area. And that, my friends, is basically it. So again, doing a recap, I've got my electronic stuff, I've got my Clothes, uh, definitely underwear, socks, scrubs, and then everything else is kind of whatever. And then Remy's things, including his toys, definitely his food, and his uh, leashes and clothes, and um, and a crate if any. He doesn't really use it, but in case he needs it, um, I don't know. Things might change because, but and during COVID times, pandemic, they don't clean the rooms every day, so they might start doing that again. And definitely, Remy needs to be in a crate. Um, I need to find a board and care for him. And then uh, a couple of light jackets because I'm not going to be going to the freezing temperatures anymore. Thank God. And uh, bags for my uh, documents, books, laptops, electronics. And that's pretty much it.
What's up guys? It's Nurse Howie again and I have finished one orientation shift uh, for 12 hours in the ICU and then I had a day off, which is cool, the next day and so I used the entire morning, the entire first six hours, which was longer than I thought I would have, to go find a new hotel because the hotel that I was currently staying at was a little too Let's just say um, there was a lot of drug dealings going on and it wasn't the kind that you get from the Pixis or from the Omnicell. It wasn't from the medication cabinet that I get from the hospital. It was more outdoorsy <laughs> medication administration if you don't want to eat. So I was, the hotel wasn't really satisfying my Maslow scale of hierarchy. So. <laughs> Um, I went and looked at different hotels. So here's some things that I learned. Make sure that you have a hotel that has a discount. Tell them that you have a health, you're a healthcare worker, or see if you have COVID crisis rates. If that doesn't seem to be a thing anymore, now that yay, COVID um, deaths are going down and vaccines are going up, uh, but you can still ask for healthcare rates. And if your own agency has any discounted rates, you can use their corporate account. They might give you at least some 20% off or something like that. And what I should have known is that I, before, I should have seen exactly, make sure I mapped it out on the map. Number one, I need to be able to be in the city at least a day ahead of time. Okay. Um, two days ahead of time, sorry. Uh, so I can just relax before the day of orientation and get a good night's rest. And if I come in the day before orientation, then I have the whole entire 24 hours to look for a decent place to sleep, at least for the first week, because that is the most hectic for me when I'm starting a new contract, uh, because I'm orienting, I'm making sure that I know what I'm doing, um, I'm trying to make a good impression, I'm trying to find my way around the hospital, and I'm trying to make sure that nobody stabs me in my sleep. And so that last part is pretty important. And um, so yeah, Definitely want to come to your uh, place during the daytime, two days ahead of orientation. Then the day before orientation, just kind of relax and chill and have a good night's rest. Make sure your uniform is ready. Um, and then go to orientation the next day. Make sure you are on time and uh, you have some kind of a badge. And uh, at least um, navy blue. Everybody always has navy blue, so I just buy navy blue for now. I usually just wear black and navy blue, but now I just wear navy blue. Forget about all this crazy fancy scrubs type stuff. If you're a travel nurse, navy blue will always set you right. You know, because everybody always expects nurses to wear navy blue, as far as I've seen, at least in orientation. Um, I went to, here's what I'm gonna have now is white shoes, because they look professional. And I finally found out the secret to having nice white shoes, okay? There is a product that I saw at the mall, which I'll put a video up, and you don't clean white shoes. It turns out, here's a secret. You won't even see me to. You paint over them. You just paint over them. There's this fancy thing that I got um, from the mall, and this guy was like, hey, let me clean your shoes, and I'll show you a product that you can buy, and I said, oh, why not? I need to get my shoes clean, because the nurse nurse manager saw, must have seen, you know, my, me in my uniform and my dirty shoes and must have had a bad impression on her because she was not super duper uh, uh, impressed by me. And uh, I mean, she had like 30 other people to take care of. So I'm sure I was barely on her radar, but I did kind of stand up a little, stand out a little bit because I was the only ICU nurse in that entire room. And they said that that was the last batch of travel nurses that they were going to hire so <laughs> make sure uh yeah so that was a missed opportunity but hey um, i'm going to try to make sure that i get a good night's rest and make sure that I'm, I'm really good for my first shift on my own definitely um great thing is is that you i had uh a, a unit orientation with the uh, nurse educator for that unit so she was an icu nurse specialist and she had a nice packet. Definitely need to know the door codes uh, for the patients. Uh, oh, before that, I'm sorry, let's go back. Uh, before that, uh, make sure that you're ready for your hotel and that you have at least a day, you know, 48 hours to look for a place to live before your, your orientation day. And then you can rest the next day prior and then um, go to orientation. Oh, here's another thing. Make sure you map out 
and make a dry run of where the hospital is and where you're supposed to park because you never want to just not realize where you're going to park and then be late or not realize where you're going to or just park somewhere and then get a ticket later because you find out that you can't just sneak out and move your car again and even if you did you wouldn't know where to park but forget all that just don't be late you know so make sure you do a dry run see where your park is where, you, where you're gonna park and then just at least if you have that luxury extra extra points check out where uh, what location you're supposed to meet uh, the person that's gonna orient you um, sometimes I'll try to ask and see oh is that that double room or I'll try to walk to see if it's in a different most or um, hospitals nowadays uh, that COVID has been around for a while you know they try to do orientation closer to the entrance you know because too many people get lost anyway so this nurse specialist after the uh, the general orientation of you know like how you they're gonna show you how to how they like for you to put on your PPE, they're gonna show you how they like for you to operate the glucose machine. They're gonna, you know, call out names, of course, call out roll call to see who's here and who's not, and then they're gonna see to make sure that you're placed in the right area. And then after that, uh, oh yeah, during that time, I, I always forget this too. I don't know why, but try to be quiet. Uh, don't ask stupid questions. Everybody just wants to go to their unit and most likely the person that's going to be orienting you is a top nurse manager and they're looking at you, seeing, trying to scope you out to see if they have a bad impression of you and you don't have a leg to stand on because you can't demonstrate your skills. They're just looking at you based on how you act and how you appear. So just keep quiet. Here's a good general rule I just learned from uh, um, somebody on the radio. Uh, listening to a sports caster. Anyway, here's the rule. Don't ask questions that you don't already know the answer to, okay? All right. Um, just, and if you don't, just be quiet. I did find it was good to nice, it was nice for me to use my nursing skills to be able to kind of um, introduce myself to some of the people around me on the table and I made some good contacts with somebody who worked in a different unit, but she found a cheaper housing section. Um, for me, uh, she found it through a Travel Nurse Gypsy housing site, and it she vouched that the house was actually a really nice, um, decent sized house. But they were only asking for less than a thousand dollars a month, which is more my alley because I used to, you know, go to fancy hotels. And then by the end of my contract, um, once it was finished, I went home and I was like, "What happened to all my money?" Well, it went to all the fancy housing that I went. I went to like hotel stuff like 130 bucks a night you know that adds up to like four thousand dollars a month there's no point working travel nursing gigs if you're spending so much money on hotels so make sure that I, I like to make sure that my hotels are less than fifty dollars a night at the same time um, it is kind of unless you do your again two days ahead of time prior to orientation or if you because if you don't do those two days prior and you look around the city for a day you're gonna end up um, yes pay you can still find a hotel for like 50 60 bucks a night but most likely you're gonna get stabbed in the neck oh, no. okay so because it is not satisfactory for at least the bottom tier of the Maslow scale of hierarchy let's just say your safety is not gonna be fulfilled okay it's not safe so give yourself some time to find a nice hotel room. So yes, this now we're now that we're done with um, general orientation. Now you're gonna go to your unit orientation, and usually a uh, nurse certified nurse specialist will show you around, at least give you an orientation of where things are in the unit. Um, I know your shadow preceptor will show you all this stuff too, but you never know if you're gonna get a good one, and even if they're nice, you don't know if they're good. Um, so I end up just kind of making sure that I, at least I get this part. So it was very cool that she had the door codes. She had a map. Um, she had like a, a text reminder, but I was kind of, Ugh, I don't know if I want you to see my cell phone. And she was like, oh, it's fine. I promise I won't spam you. And then she was like, you, you know, like pointing to my phone. I was like, you can't be looking at guys' cell phones, okay? Especially gay guys' cell phones. You never know what's gonna pop up, okay? All right, um, and she had, this is what is most difficult. Um, for ICU documentation, 
Uh, definitely want to know. So I was studying this for about an hour, a good hour, because I'm being paid lots of money. And I want to make sure I get my documentation right, otherwise you're going to get called. And I'm only working in this um, unit for a short term. So I want them to like me, and I want to be able to be professional. Um, here's um, admission. You barely, you rarely get admissions in ICU. It's usually just transfers. So definitely want to know transfers. And you barely discharge from the ICU too. Um, luckily, I work tele and sometimes med service, so I don't do a little bit of admissions and discharges. I, I did my time, okay? But um, yeah, you don't want to get caught off guard. And I did not have any uh, stipulations in my contract never to float. I do float to the uh, to tele or more likely step down, uh, but you never know. It's not like a large hospital, and um, I'm going to be working 60 hours a week for a short contract, so I'll be busting my balls. Excuse, excuse me for the reference, but um, I probably think that, and the census is lower uh, for COVID and um, ICU patients in general, so most likely I'm assuming that I'm gonna float somewhere because my hours are guaranteed. It is an auto contract. So what is great is that she put down exactly the times of all documentation. So pain and RAS scores and eyes and O's uh, are every hour. Yikes. Uh, I know vital signs and assessments are every four hours, so 8, 12, 16 uh, for day shift uh, and, you know, for night shift, um, 8, 12, 8 a.m., 6 a.m. probably. And there's restraints, turns, oral care, IV, and safety is every two hours. And then systems assessment, wounds, NGTOG peg, chest tube, and dr other drains are every four. And then once the shift, the shift screening, I don't know what OE details are. Uh, plan of care, ABCDEF, SCDs, catheter care, isolation, CHG, bath, weight. This is a very, very good, I totally really took a picture of this. I will put this on my website, you can download it. Of course, I'm gonna redact um, some of the stuff. Definitely wanna give credit to Miss Sandy T for this one. I'm not gonna disclose my hospital because I don't disclose the hospitals due to patient privacy. Anyway, but this, Lovely CNS lady, um, definitely was very cool. She, that's exactly what I need to know as a travel nurse. Maps, um, room codes, um, and definitely documentation. And what I need to find out from a uh, nursing preceptor, because uh, travel nurses usually just get one day of orientation, is how to find those things to document. And then, what's an easier way, how to organize my day so I could just not come out while I'm taking care of patients. Because really you wanna be in the patient care side and making sure that you're, you're taking care of your patient. Because my, my shadow today or yesterday was very sweet. She was very good at talking to other nurses. <laughs> Let's just say that. Um, I don't think she caught the ha septic shock um, I try not to say anything, but I definitely um, was manning the the monitors. I mean, she was probably busy doing other stuff, and I understand that. Uh, but um, there was a huge drop in SBP, and it was like, the map was like 40. I was like, oh my god, who was looking at the monitors? No one. No one was looking at the monitors. And there were two float nurses in that unit. So. Anyway. Um, I mean, I'll make mistakes too, so I don't want to jump on anybody's bones. Um, definitely also want to know blood transfusion, how to do that. You don't want to get caught with your arms tied, especially if there's a whew, massive transfusion, which I've been caught in many, many times. And I'm telling you, time is of the essence. You, oh, man. Um, and that's it. There's a couple of things here about, oh, wait, I'm sorry. I almost missed the most important stuff. There's transfer orders you need to know. Um, there's some things about, you know, uh, men's first tele documentation, step down documentation if you need it, if I ever have to float, uh, fall stuff. Haparin is important. Hypoglycemia is pretty standard. Um, nursing insulin doses is important because this one's unique in that they have, um, uh, D, you know, they don't have, uh, they have DKA, DKA algorithms, um, and, then, and then and then the um, heparin, I mean, the insulin infusion algorithm changes once the anion gap is closed, 
uh, and the blood sugar is less than 200 at least once and the patient is alert and oriented so yeah and uh, even though the acuity is down on the on this unit they seem to be running out of gravity I, of, of, of uh, feeding tubing so we have to do it by gravity and to me that's that's really kind of sad because if you're having a patient that relies on food and glucose and you don't have a feeding tube machine that's working, that's, that's pretty terrible. Um, but you know, you work with what you have, so you adapt. Uh, restraint documentation, um, SBT and SAT trials are pretty standard, but make sure I know. The uh, sepsis is pretty sad. Stroke, you wanna know their stroke who to call, what to do, and make sure that list is done. Because you don't want to get caught and miss a step. And this is great. This is fantastic what she did. Ah, the bread and butter. This is the ICU drips sheet, okay? Because this is the very first hospital I've seen that uses, I mean, look at you. This is the very first ICU that I've worked at that uses non-weight-based Levo and Neo. So I'm sure it's probably more common, but in my experience, uh, you usually titrate by weight as well. But that's okay. So I had to just kind of make sure to make a mental note that, oh, and also when the patient went into like MAP40, I saw in the, um, the electronic health record, which by the way is not is a different medical health record than I'm used to, but at least uh, there was, eventually I was gonna run into a health record software that I'm not used to, but here we are. But the usual things are the same. You always wanna know where the orders are and also what the orders say. So there was this titration orders that they had and then they had a specific order that said that if MAP was below 50, then you increase the Levo to 20 micrograms per minute. So I don't know, that wouldn't translate because yeah, to another patient if you're dosing off of weight, but this is only by micrograms per minute. So. Um, it's completely different because everybody knows that if you're doing levo by weight based then you don't go past one okay so um, and usually we don't even go that high and if you go that high then you probably need a second presser and more prayers okay um, they also use ketamine um, which I haven't seen in a while but I know it's been around since the 60s so it's about time to get myself familiar with that but there are some things that they do weight-based, like dopamine and dobutamine, which makes sense because uh, it's very cardiac related. And so most likely this patient, hopefully you'll have like a, some kind of hemodynamic monitoring and you might adjust to cardiac index if the cardiac output is way different. You know, usually we have a lot of patients that are not ideal weight. So you'll wanna use, switch to cardiac index instead of cardiac, um, a regular cardiac output. Okay, so there's urinary protocol, um, IV guidelines, definitely want to, I mean, I, I obviously I'm not going to discontinue a CBC by, my, by myself, nor would I. Um, I definitely want to make sure the hospital is cool with that. Um, even then, I wouldn't, I would be sketchy about doing that. And what they want with their IV bags. Oh, I want to call the wound nurse, that's pretty standard as well. And that is it. That is a very good chart. I will try to make it my own and then make it downloadable for you in the website. Thank you for watching. Time to go to bed early. Early to bed, early rise. Thanks you guys. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Check the bell button if you want to receive more notifications for my videos. I don't I know I'm trying to get more dependable with these videos, but um, I'll show you a video again, a quick snippet of like me going from hotel to hotel. It's not great. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm getting, to, I'm getting used to travel nursing, but I'm also getting tired of it. But I'm already on. Good night, guys. That's how we out.